Project Lazarus, the military's dark secret. The air hung thick with the metallic tang of disinfectant and the cloying scent of something I couldn't quite place, a blend of decay and something vaguely floral. We were deep within the bowels of a military base, tucked away in the Nevada desert, a place so classified that its existence was denied by the government itself. I, a medical researcher with an unyielding thirst for knowledge, had been brought here, lured by the promise of groundbreaking work. Little did I know, the experiment I was about to witness would haunt my waking hours for the rest of my life. The room was sterile, white walls lined with high-tech equipment that hummed with an unsettling tension. In the center, a large glass chamber pulsed with an eerie blue light. Inside, a figure lay strapped to a table. It was human, but something was terribly wrong. Its skin was a sickly green, and its eyes were vacant, staring into the void. This was Subject 32, the culmination of years of secret research, the pinnacle of their Project Lazarus. The lead scientist, a man named Dr. Thorne, with eyes that burned like molten silver, explained the project. The goal was to manipulate the human body, to unlock the secrets of immortality, to create a soldier who could endure any battlefield, any wound. This was achieved through genetic modification and an experimental serum, a cocktail of unknown substances that they called the Lazarus Protocol. Thorne's voice, normally a suave baritone, took on an almost religious fervor as he described the potential. The serum, he explained, allowed them to manipulate the body's regenerative abilities, to heal wounds at an astonishing rate, to prolong life. It was supposed to be the dawn of a new era, a world where death was a distant memory. But Subject 32 was not the success story they'd hoped for. He was the embodiment of their failures. The serum had worked, but it had worked too well. His body was in a constant state of regeneration, even after severe trauma. He wasn't just immortal. He was a living nightmare. Thorne went on to describe the side effects. Hallucinations, bouts of violent aggression, and a profound sense of detachment from reality. He seemed almost proud of these anomalies, describing them as hurdles to be overcome, problems to be solved. His words sent chills down my spine. This wasn't science. It was a twisted experiment in the pursuit of godhood. Then, the nightmare began. The blue light in the chamber intensified, and Subject 32 began to twitch. His vacant eyes snapped open, filled with a primal rage. He screamed, a deafening sound that seemed to crack the walls of the chamber. His muscles bulged and contorted, his skin turned an even more sickly shade of green, and he began to claw at the constraints holding him down. The room descended into chaos. Scientists scrambled, trying to subdue him while Thorne barked orders, his voice a frantic tremor. He had a panicked air, a sense of fear that contrasted with his earlier bravado. The chamber began to crack, and the blue light seemed to bleed into the surrounding room, casting ominous shadows on the walls. I, frozen with terror, could only watch as Subject 32 broke free. He ripped through the heavy metal restraints as if they were made of paper, his eyes burning with a malevolent fire. He lunged at Thorn, tearing at his throat with monstrous claws that had sprouted from his hands. The scientist screamed in agony, his blood staining the white walls like a macabre painting. In the pandemonium, I made my escape. I couldn't stay and witness this horror, couldn't bear the thought of what might happen to me. I ran, blindly, through the maze of corridors, the screams of the scientist echoing behind me. I didn't stop until I reached the outside, the cold desert air a stark contrast to the stifling atmosphere of the facility. I never looked back. I fled the base, abandoning my career, my life, my sanity. I couldn't live with the guilt of what I had seen, with the knowledge that this experiment, this horror, was real. I had seen the face of immortality, and it was a creature of pure, unadulterated terror. Now, years later, the memory of that night still haunts me. I see Subject 32 in my dreams, his eyes burning into my soul. I hear Thorne's desperate screams, a constant reminder of the price of hubris, 
the danger of tampering with the fabric of life itself. I am a prisoner of my own knowledge, forever cursed to carry the burden of a secret too terrible to bear. Thank you for diving into the spine-chilling mysteries with chills unveiled. If you've enjoyed the eerie tales and creepy narratives that send shivers down your spine, make sure to subscribe to our channel for more hair-raising content. Hit that notification bell so you never miss an unveiling of the unknown. Join the community of thrill-seekers and let the darkness unfold. Subscribe now and let the nightmares continue.